In this webinar, we're going to take a look at Typing Club School Edition. We'll take a look at both the student and teacher experience so that you can know what your students experience when they sign in, and then also the tools that are available to you as a teacher to make it the best experience possible for your kids. Everyone that signs into your account will sign in from the same URL. This account's URL is shown here, and that's where both my teachers and students sign in. I'm going to sign in as one of my students so we can see what her dashboard looks like. When she signs in, she'll see her lesson plans and tests listed here on the left side of the screen. And then on the right side, there's a quick summary of all of her statistics. She can track her speed, the time that she's spent, as well as see her keyboard coverage and accuracy. Um, here we actually have these nice little goal circles. You can actually set that as a teacher and then your students will know whether or not they're meeting their time goals. I'm going to go ahead and open up Typing Jungle. This is our main lesson plan on Typing Club. It contains close to 700 lessons and will take your students all the way from learning how to find the bumps on the FNJ key through uh, eventually a goal of 75 words a minute over the course of all of those um, many, many lessons. So from the very beginning, what we do is we make sure to introduce sets of keys with a nice introductory lesson. This is what we call our judgment-free zone, where first we're just showing them exactly how they should place their fingers, giving them some nice feedback, and then when they're actually typing in this type of lesson, if they make a mistake, it'll simply show them what they're doing wrong, and then once they get the correct key, they're allowed to move on. They don't earn less uh, stars for these particular types of lessons because here we're just worried about making sure that we get the uh, placement right on the keyboard, start to learn that muscle memory, then we get that nice great work, uh, and we move on. Once we're ready to practice something that we've learned, then we are moving into a more normal typing interface where if we make a mistake, oh, then we can actually learn to use that backspace and make a correction. What you'll see here is the color coding system that will always be on screen to show your students if they got something correct, made a correction, or just left it wrong. We also show their speed and accuracy tracked live, and they can always reference that. And again, um, if they prefer not to see that, if it's a little too uh, distracting or stressful, they can always turn that off. Um, the nice clean interface uh, is the default option. However, your students do have the choice to customize that. So if you want them to be able to uh, make it a little bit more, more uh, friendly, or for me, I personally like the dark theme. It's a little easier on my eyes. I usually go with that one. But they do have the options there, as well as changing the size. Uh, for any students that would need a um, more uh, uh, easier to see version of the program, they can turn on both the dark theme and the extra large accessible font and that would make it uh, very easy to see. So let's go ahead and move on from there and we're going to just put that back to a more uh, normal setting and then also show you just a couple of the other settings we have here. Your students can turn on and off that nice little keyboard sound uh, they also have the option to activate voiceover, and what the voiceover will do, there are three different levels. The first level will read everything word by word for your students. The second level here will read everything letter by letter, uh, and that way uh, they don't have to be able to see the screen in order to type it. And then the fully guided experience would actually read it letter by letter, and then if the student pauses for a certain amount of time, it will actually tell them how to get to that uh, particular key from the home row. So it would describe, uh, you know, press down with your left pointer finger to type the letter F. So it actually tells them how to get there. So you can always use those options. Um, you can even turn these on for your students, which I'll, I'll show you a little bit later. Your students also have the option of showing both the hand guides and a left or right hand guide. Uh, we have specific lesson plans that teach left and right handed typing, so you can always make use of those if need be. And your students can also customize their keyboard guide so they can turn it off completely. They can change the language if they are typing on a different keyboard than a standard English keyboard. Uh, and they can also update the skin if they want something a little bit more their style. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, see another type of lesson. So that was our regular lesson and then one of our uh, introductory lessons. We also have games 
throughout the lesson plan. And the games are nice because they still track your students just like any other uh, lesson would. However, if they make <laughs> mistakes, it's a little bit more of a fun environment where they can uh, feel like they're playing a game, but we're tracking them just the same as any other lesson. So while they are, um, you know, having fun, we're still learning how they're doing in terms of speed and accuracy. And then we have, um, of course, at the end, we see our results page. Ah, we earned a badge. So uh, the students also earn badges as they work through the lesson plan. Um, so there's a lot of different badges, which I'll show you in a little bit. So that's another type of motivational tool, aside from the games and the stars, to keep them wanting to move, uh, move through the program. And at the end of a lesson, your students can review their performance. So um, here, you know, you can see the mistakes that I made, and then uh, how I did in terms of my accuracy, my speed, my duration, and then what the requirements were to actually pass that lesson in the first place. We have another type of lesson that's meant to help break that uh, hunting and pecking habit that so many students seem to have. These are called anchoring lessons, and in this particular lesson, you'll hold down either the J or F key, depending on the hand we're focusing on. And if your student lets go of that J key, they won't be able to type. And we're going to only type letters that are typed with your left hand. So the uh, functionality of it is very similar to a normal type of lesson. However, if they let go of that J key and they start you know, roaming their hands around the keyboard, they won't be able to continue, to continue typing. So that's really going to begin to help reinforce typing with the proper side of the uh, keyboard and the right hands. All right, so let's keep moving. Uh, so throughout the lesson plan, in addition to the anchoring lessons and everything else that we've seen so far, we also have instructional videos. So for instance, on your very first day of class, when your students start off with the program, they'll see the introduction to typing, which will tell them all about what we're doing here, why we want to learn to type like a pro, and how to set up their finger positioning and looking for those bumps on the F and J key. So if you're not able to, um, you know, tell them all of that, uh, either in person or for any particular reason, the program will tell them exactly what they um, what's expected of them. And there are other instructional videos sprinkled throughout about the home row, the importance of sitting straight and being healthy, taking active breaks. So there's a lot of um, different experiences built in to this lesson plan that will really, um, you know, just keep it dynamic and keep it interesting as they move through. Uh, speaking of being dynamic, we also now have dynamic lessons and what these do is they actually look at your student's specific profile and each time they access one of these lessons, they'll actually get a different text that will focus on the particular combinations of letters that they are struggling with. So each time they finish it, as long as if they did well, then it will move on to the next combination that they're having trouble with. And as you see, it's progressive, so it will start with a particular combination and then um, add, use an actual word that that combination appears in. So what we want to do there is help students focus on the areas that they need to work a little bit more to uh, become the best type as possible. Um, so that's a little bit about the student experience and I do want to mention before we move on that we have the option for you to let your students start off with a placement test. So if you would like to, if you have a group of students maybe who have some experience and don't need to start right at the beginning, they can always take this test and it'll drop them into the spot in that lesson plan that uh, suits their skill level best. So you can make use of that. Uh, and your students also, as I mentioned, do earn badges. Just want to show you how they can track their badges here. This is the one I just earned a moment ago. And below that, I can see all of the ones that um, I'm yet to earn. So I know what I'm working towards next. And then we also have a scoreboard. So this is for this class on this particular lesson plan. And what we can see here is how everyone in the class is doing and where we are in terms of um, placement. Now this is optional and you can also turn it into a leaderboard and show top three or you can disable it completely. Uh, but sometimes a little healthy competition can also be good. So that's up to you. And your students also have access to a much more in-depth version of the stats that we saw that little summary of before. Again, we can see our speed, accuracy, and coverage. We can see a nice breakdown of our practice time, 
which will show us uh, what time we've spent learning and typing, um, as well as when it's a little bigger, you can also see what we've um, failed there. So that gives you a nice breakdown of time. And this nice little handy chart just visualizes how many attempts we've done today and over the past week. We have a number of uh, different charts available to help both your students and then uh, also their parents at home see how the students are doing uh, in terms of their progress and their overview. So here we can see uh, pra uh, practice time, accuracy, coverage, speed. You can turn off any of these parameters that you want and you can see them over daily, weekly, or monthly uh, time frames. So what that will do is just allow you to see how the student's doing um, overall. So that's, their, that's a nice overview for you. You can also take a look at the keyboard mastery and what that does is show you for both speed and accuracy how the student's doing and for any particular letter they can even click it and they can see uh, how to type that combination. So if it's one that they're having a little bit more of a hard time with, this will allow them to, to see, okay, okay, I should move my hand this way. <laughs> Um, just below that we have our finger mastery and what that is is um, speed and accuracy per finger and per hand. We also have speed and accuracy per character. And then just below that we also have the um, a, a number of comparative charts that allow your students to see their practice time for um, uh, for them themselves, sorry, uh, their class and then their grade within the account. So that will allow them to just see how they're doing in terms of practice time compared to those populations. And then similarly we show the same for typing speed and for keyboard coverage. We also show the lesson plan completion rate, so how quickly are they working through the lesson plans that they're working on. And we give you a nice practice calendar, which you can uh, change the start day of, depending on the day that uh, your week begins. And then you can always hover over any particular day to see how many attempts you did that day, and then a summary for the week. So this is a nice place for your students to come and track um, how many attempts they've been doing and how much time they've been spending. The punch card shows your students when they're mostly signing into practice. So are they signing in late at night or during class mostly? And your students can also see their recent practices. Uh, they can even play those back, which you can also do. This is what we were typing just a moment ago during that dynamic practice session. And then you can also, um, if the student had taken any tests, she would see the test attempts just below. Uh, she hasn't taken any yet, so they aren't there for her at this moment. Uh, that's an overview of what your students have available to them. Um, I'm going to quickly just show you two other types of lesson plans that they have that you have available to assign to your students. If you do have students that are in kindergarten or first grade, you can assign our Jungle Junior lesson plan. And this lesson plan is uh, much more video uh, heavy. It will introduce students to each letter of the alphabet. It'll have them warm up their hands and fingers, and then it will have them type each letter where we're just starting to focus on associating the hand and a finger with a letter. So we have a much more colorful interface. We have uh, Mike the Monkey to helpfully uh, show the students where we're looking on the keyboard and everything is completely color coded. So uh, this is just a different experience to get your students ready for when they actually start their full keyboarding practice. And another type of lesson plan that we have are our story lessons. So for instance, this is The Perfect Match. The Perfect Match is um, a sci-fi story and when your students are typing one of our stories, the, um, the video comes to life as they type. And then if they do make a mistake, it pauses both the music and the action to bring attention to the fact that they've made that error in, a, in addition to the fact that we, of course, always highlight similarly to the other lessons. So that's just another uh, type of motivation. You know, they're, they're reading the story and typing it as they go and bringing it to life. And a lot of students, um, you know, seem to be very engaged by that. So we hope that you make use of that as well. Uh, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and sign in as my teacher. So let's, let's go ahead and get signed in. Again, we start at that same URL, same sign-in page, and we sign in with our email to sign in as a teacher. Uh, when you sign in, you're for, first greeted with your recent account activity, just to get an idea of how many people are signing in and how many lessons they're doing. We also see our live activity feed just below, so as your students are sitting in class working, this will update 
uh, constantly. So these are those lessons that we worked on together before. Uh, here, similar to how we saw your student can play everything back, you can play back each lesson as they've completed it, you're able to play it back right away. Where you'll spend most of your time as a teacher is on your classes tab, so we're going to jump there. You'll see your list of classes, and when you choose your particular class that you're working with at that moment, you'll see a nice summary at the top, and the summary will just tell you whether or not students can see that scoreboard, how many kids are enrolled, if they're allowed to jump ahead, just a nice little summary. This is where you can also activate the class codes. So we do have the option where you can allow your students to join a class um, or even actually sign up for your account by using either this class code or this full URL. So you can make joinable classes so that you don't have to do the enrolling. That's a new feature that we have just released. Uh, just below your summary, you will see that similar live activity, but this is just for this class. And below that, you might recognize the, uh, the style of report. This is the active practice time, but this is for the entire class. And the way I like to use this one is to see if my students are failing a lot of their lessons. If that's a big red block, that probably means that what they're working on is too hard for them, and it might be a good idea to dial back the difficulty, which we'll look at how to do in just a moment. And then you might also recognize the typing activity, so again, we can toggle which um, statistics we're seeing on that particular chart and whether we want to see it over the different time frames here. A punch card for the class, so it seems like everyone tends to sign in you know, during working hours. <laughs> and then a practice calendar uh, that lets us see a summary of each day and each week. Now I'm going to go ahead and pop over through the other tabs we have available from the Manage Class uh, main section. We can see our student enrollment. We can print a roster if need be, so if you want everyone to sign in, you can do that. You can add a student from this interface if you need to, and if you click one of the kiddos, you can actually go and see their, their page there. You can add an, an instructor if you co-teach. You can uh, do a lot with your lesson plans, so we're going to spend a moment here. So this lesson plans tab will show you exactly what lesson plans are assigned, and then what we've done, if anything, in terms of the difficulty, limiting the progress, the dependency, and the placement. So uh, let's just take a closer look at some of that. So for our typing jungle, if we click normal difficulty, we get the option to adjust the difficulty level in terms of words per minute and accuracy. So for instance, if we want to make this one word a minute easier for everyone in the class, we would put a negative one. And maybe we want everyone to uh, only have to get 70% accuracy. We can update that, and immediately that is now um, in effect. So across the board versus the defaults, everything is one word, minute, one word per minute easier, and the students only have to get 70% accuracy in order to pass the lessons in this class. Um, and then conversely, if you would like to make it more difficult, you could say, you know, positive two, don't put the negative there, and we want them to get 90% accuracy, make it more challenging, and you can update it, and again, that takes effect immediately. And that will be class-wide for everyone working on Typing Jungle in astronomy. The other thing you can do is set a range of lessons, so if you want your students to only focus on the home row, you can assign lessons, I think it's one through maybe 23, and then they would only be able to access lessons 1 through 23. Anything after that, it would say, uh, this lesson is locked. So you can make sure that your students are working on the content that you would like them to work on at that time. The next row over is dependency. And what that means is, if I don't want this lesson plan to be available to my students until they've finished a different lesson plan, I choose that from the list, update it, and then you'll see visually here that they cannot work on perfect match until they've completed typing jungle. And then the last option along the line here you'll see is the placement test, which is a simple enable or disable. Um, if it's enabled, as we saw before, the student can take a placement test and uh, that will drop them into the lesson plan at the appropriate spot. Or you could disable it if you want them to all start from lesson one or whatever you've assigned here as your uh, range. You can, of course, also unassign lessons from this interface, 
and you can also add additional lesson plans. So if you want to assign your you know, third grade vocab list, you can do that here. Next up is our edit class tab. Here you have um, access to a lot of those details we saw in the overview. So your class name, your ID, this, all of this, you would have set this up when you first created the class, but if you want to change anything at any point, you can do that now or here. So the scoreboard visibility, you can change. Again, as I mentioned, you don't have to have a scoreboard. You could have just a leaderboard or you can completely make everything um, hidden and only students see their own scores. So that's up to you. You can decide whether or not your students can use the backspace um, and then whether or not they can jump ahead through the lesson plan. So that's a pretty important one. By default, it's set that uh, your students must work in order through their lessons, but if you prefer, you can allow them to jump ahead. That's up to you. Uh, the grade does not affect anything about the class. It's just for your record keeping. You can set the grade here. And then you can also decide um, to archive this class and save it for later or whether it's ongoing. And as always, uh, if you see that update settings button, please do ahead go do go ahead and click it to make sure you save your settings. You have the option to email your students right from Typing Club, so you can customize the form here, or just send it as it is. It'll automatically pull in their username and password. Or if you prefer to uh, hand out a card to your students, we also have the option to print login cards, which will generate a nice PDF for you. You can, again, customize that and then just cut those up and hand them out to your students. Similar to the email students function, you can send a parent letter. So um, this one is, uh, or rather this one you actually have to hand out because we don't have our parent emails here, but it will pull in all the relevant information for each student and then you can hand those out and send them home. A little record history to show you what's been going on in the class. If you're curious about when you enrolled someone, you can check there. And then one uh, last very important spot is our student settings. So as I mentioned earlier, you can set those goals that we are looking at from the student view. This is where you do that. So you come to your class and then student settings and you'll see the option to change. Okay, I want my students to do 20 minutes a day and uh, let's, you know, two hours a week, which <laughs> uh, you can change the day that your week starts on. And you now also have the option to decide how many stars your students have to earn in order to move through the lessons. So uh, that's a newer, newer feature for us, and um, it does come with a little bit of a warning, just saying, you know, make sure that you're not setting it too hard so that your students get frustrated and don't want to continue practicing. But if you want to make sure that they earn at least, you know, maybe two or three stars before they can move on, you can do that right here. And then below that, there's the section that is more about the student um, interface. So here you can either say, I want my students to definitely see or not see the virtual keyboard, uh, what language and layout they have for that keyboard, whether or not they see the hands um, and which hands they see, uh, whether or not they have the voiceover or the sound effects, or if they can move on, move along on error, you can do first, second, or third or just not block them as the, the standard default. So all of those options are available to you here, as well as saying that your students can or cannot um, change their themes, their fonts, or use the replay button. So if you do turn that off, your student won't even see that theme um, menu. So you could always disable those if, um, you know, if your kids are getting a little too distracted and um, maybe want to uh, help them focus, you could always turn that off here. And again, as always, whatever you change, then go ahead and hit Update Settings to save. All right, let's go ahead and move on to actually looking at one of our Typing Jungle um, lesson plan tabs. So for this lesson plan, now, again, you might recognize those familiar reports, and you can now see them on a lesson plan by lesson plan basis. So that'll give you a really nice idea about how your students are doing in terms of speed, practice time, uh, their progress overview, uh, their typing activity, so a lot of those familiar looking uh, reports, but this is just for this particular lesson plan. Some of the new ones that you'll see here are the class placement ones. So we show you class placement for coverage, speed, um, uh, just, just those two, sorry, uh, the punch card, and then the practice calendar, which again, you uh, have seen in a couple other spots by now. 
And then if we go to our scoreboard, what that shows us is the summary for how every student has done so far on this lesson plan. So how far have they gotten, how much time have they spent, um, and then we also have the option in this interface to customize the difficulty per student. So as you can see here, I've made it one word per minute harder for Hermione. Uh, for Ron, I've made it one word per minute easier, and I only require him to get 60% minimum accuracy to pass a lesson. Uh, it's 10, 10 you know, words per minute harder for Harry. So uh, this is where you can control the per student difficulty. So if you have a kid that's either struggling or you know, flying through way too quickly, you can always uh, adjust that here. You can also see the per lesson statistics, uh, sorry, the per lesson attempts for a particular student by clicking that uh, per lesson button. You can also reset that student's entire progress on this lesson plan. Please do note that that is um, a permanent action. We cannot recover that, so just make sure that you want to remove that progress before uh, you do it. You can also export what you see here as a CSV if you want to manipulate the data at all. And you can also clear the progress for the entire class from here. But again, same, uh, same principle applies. If you do that, then it is um, gone, and we um, can't really recover that. So just make sure that you want to do that before you go ahead and clear the progress. You can also check out the attempt history, uh, which is available uh, on this tab here. And then uh, that, what that will show you, sorry about that, <laughs> what that will show you is um, all of the uh, attempts that the students have done on these particular lessons and you can go ahead and just uh, play back any particular attempt that you're looking for or even delete it if a student maybe you did something on behalf of a student just to test something or show them you could always delete it here um, then we also have a student progress overview and what this will do is it give you a nice bird's eye view of what your students have completed and how many stars they've earned and then in a more detailed view, what you can actually do is hover over any particular lesson that they've completed and see um, all the details for that. How many times they've done it, how much time they've spent, the score and accuracy they've received. So everything that you would want to know is available for you right there. Uh, this one really just gives you a nice idea of, you know, um, hopefully if your students are working in order, this is a solid blue line. And if we see too many of these gray boxes, then it might be time to go and talk to that student and encourage them to go back and get all five stars before moving on too far ahead. One of the last spots that we'll look at on our uh, class's um, set of tools is the report section. So I know we have seen a lot of um, very colorful graphs and charts, but here we have more of a standard report section. We can look at a weekly or daily time report, and what that allows us to do, let's go ahead and set that back a little further to get a bit more data. It'll show us for every week uh, how much time the students have done, and again, as always, you can set the different start day here. Just remember to update. And then the program will also very kindly highlight anyone who's done less than a certain amount of time for you. So um, you, know, you can easily see here how much time they've spent, and then you might want to talk to those kids that aren't quite hitting those time goals. So you can use that uh, for the weekly or the daily. That's a very similar report, just on the different time frames. Then we also have an activity summary report. The activity summary report, uh, again, you can set your dates. So let's go ahead and set that back and update. Give you a nice overview for the number of attempts that your students have done and broken uh, down into past, failed, and partial. You can see the collective time spent practicing and the average speed accuracy and real accuracy. So that's just a nice um, overview of you for, uh, for, for how this class is doing. And then below that you'll see the summary of what every student has done. We can see their new lessons, how many attempts they've done, again past, failed, and partial, their total time, stars, score. So really just a summary of everything that that uh, group of students has done and uh, we also give you the option to export that as a CSV file and that will allow you to you know, manipulate the data and um, get you know, take a closer look if need be. Uh, so that's an overview of everything you can do with your classes. I know it's a lot of options. Uh, you can you know just assign typing jungle and let your kids start practicing and they'll have everything they need at their fingertips to learn how to become excellent typists. Uh, all of these additional options are there for you to just make the program more customized and more your own. 
but don't feel like you have to use them. They're just there for you as additional tools. I'm going to quickly just go over typing tests. I won't go too far into detail. We have a really nice help center that shows you more about tests. But if you, um, let's look at one that has a little bit of data in it. When you add a new test, the first screen that you'll see is all of your options. You can set the amount of time, who can take the test, how many times they can even take it, uh, whether or not everyone's passing just to get a baseline, or if you actually want them to meet a particular passing criteria whether or not they can use the backspace, if they should get a certificate upon completion, the dates that they're able to take the test, whether or not they get a score at the end, and of course you can give it a name and description and even choose a little banner. So we give you a lot of options there, uh, so you can make it exactly the test that you need it to be. On the edit text tab, <laughs> you can give alternative texts or just choose to give one, that's up to you. You can choose from one of our existing templates by clicking this blue link here. And what that will do is show you all of the different uh, text options so you can preview and then choose to use as, uh, as you see fit. We give you first through fifth grade specific typing tests and then drills for home top and bottom, home and uh, top combined. And then eventually we do uh, give you some SAT vocab ones if you do have students who are a little bit older and are now working on everything including capitalization, punctuation, numbers, and uh, the full breadth of the keyboard. So you can make use of those templates there. You can enroll your students from the Students tab, either by class or by uh, student by student. You can add any instructors that you'd like to collaborate with here. And then you can see your test results here. So uh, for instance, Hermione has taken this test 10 times. So we can actually see each individual time that she's taken it, when she's failed or done well, and we can play back each of those attempts. Or we can just see her best attempt here. And then we can go ahead and see her certificate. So let's go ahead and see what one of those looks like. So you can also print those off and give those to your kids. So that's a very quick little overview of the typing tests. Um, I wanted to point out the lesson plans tab. We have a really nice lesson plan library for you. And here you can find everything's broken down by language. So the first section will show you uh, Typing Jungle, those stories we were talking about, uh, Jungle Junior, the left and right hand specific lessons. Um, and then we do have a number of additional languages. We have Spanish, French, German, Italian, Portuguese, and uh, Slovak. So there's a lot of options there for you. If you do have any students who are studying a second language, um, you can always use that as an additional tool. So those lesson plans are there for you, and we're always trying to add more content so that you have um, a lot of things for your students to type um, while they're continuing their practice. And you also have the option to create custom lesson plans. Uh, we have a really nice um, tool here that will allow you to add lessons, and um, let's see. Uh, uh, you can really customize everything. You can add, um, you know, choose your own uh, cover image, if you're studying, you know, you have um, an astronomy lesson plan and you know that your students need to study a particular set of um, uh, vocabulary, you can just pop those in here. You can use our tool to easily customize everything about it. And then as soon as you save that and assign it to a class, your kids can start typing. So uh, we hope that that new lesson plan editor is a really um, helpful and easy to navigate tool for you. I know we've looked at a lot of reports, so I'm just going to briefly mention that we have a whole centralized reporting tab now. If you want to see in terms of um, per your class or per your student over either daily, weekly, or monthly time frame, um, every detail that, uh, that we have our um, data uh, collecting, you can see here. So you can see how many attempts, how much time, um, the speed and accuracy, real accuracy, how many stars the students can earn, and how many did they actually earn, how many new lessons they've completed. So we really give you a lot of information here so that you can see exactly uh, what that student has earned, what they are, um, you know, just really get a good sense for exactly what, what they've worked on, how they're doing, and um, you can also see that on a class-by-class -class or student-by-student -student basis. If you are the administrator or owner of the account, you also have access to uh, school-wide reports um, and grade-wide reports. But when we're signed in 
as a teacher, we don't see those here. I also wanted to mention that we have a documentation section. Um, we just launched this relatively new help center, so it might look a little different from what you've seen before. Uh, what we did was we broke everything down into these um, nice categories and then, you know, so we have a, a user guide. So if you are brand new to Typing Club, you can come here and it starts you right at the very beginning. Best practices for teaching, technical requirements for Typing Club, setting up your account, everything that you would need to know right from the get-go is available for you here. So we do encourage you to make use of our, um, of our help center. There's everything you know about class management and student management. It's all available for you right here. So uh, you know, try to you know, definitely make use of that and give us your feedback. Let us know what you think. And then we also, of course, have a support team. So if you look through documentation and you have trouble finding the answer that you are looking for, you can always reach out to us and um, just let us know what it was that you were looking for some help for, and one of us will get back to you as quickly as possible. Um, I want to thank you for uh, attending this <laughs> webinar with me today. I really hope that it's been helpful and has given you a sense of what your students experience and all the tools um, and content that are available to you as a teacher through Typing Club. And um, I hope that you, know, you have a wonderful and successful school year. And please uh, get in touch with us if you have any questions. Thank you.